You can't hear us, can you? I oh, know you can. There we go. Always well, we start with a joke. Of the kind of heavy stuff, well, most of it anyway, uh, because let's sort this bloody thing out. Um, a waken, a waken. You know, we've been on a journey, the human race, from here to here. That's why we got into this mess. We just need to make the journey back, and it's a choice. And it all comes from that, knowing how we respond, knowing what, what 
uh, through insight, what's happening, how we should respond to what's happening, all comes from here because it's innate intelligence beyond the bounds of time and space, beyond the matrix. This is the way home and this is why they work so hard to block this passage back home. And we need to make that journey back um, to the, the true nature of who we are, beyond time and space, into the levels where we are pure awareness. The idea at that level that we have no power is ludicrous, which is why they have to do what they've done. Because trying to manipulate and control a human race in awareness of itself don't even bother. And they do it through fear. The four-letter word that controls the word. world. Fear is a liar. What is there to fear? A great friend of mine, Moni, who's come over from America, first time out of America to this event today, uh, she calls fear false emotion appearing real. And one of the great illusions... One of the great illusions is fear. No more fear. That's how we got into this situation. No more fear. No more fear, come on. If you can't laugh at uh, insanity, you become insane. No more fear. Look at them. I wish it was a joke. It's not. It's real. Now, this is a wonderful quote. Martin Luther King, he had many, of course, but this is a fantastic quote. You may be 38 years old, and I, as I happen to be, and one day some great opportunity stands before you and calls you to stand up for some great principle, some great issue, some great cause. And you refuse to do it because you are afraid. You refuse to do it because you want to live longer. You're afraid that you will lose your job, or you're afraid that you'll be criticised, or that you will lose your popularity, or you're afraid that someone will stab you, or shoot you, or bomb your house, so you refuse to take the stand. Well, you may go on and live until you are 90, but you're still just as dead at 38 as you would be at 90. And the succession of breathing in your life is but the belated announcement of the earlier death of the spirit. When it is uncomfortable, when it is unpopular, even when it is dangerous to speak the truth, is precisely the time that the truth should be spoken. I choose freedom. I am all that is and ever can be. I am all possibility. I am infinite awareness, infinite consciousness infinite the great forever and I'm afraid of people in uniform and dark suits and rules and regulations are you kidding? No way! Who are these people? Who are these people with their rules and regulations and their rule book minds and their software perceptions and software brains are, are, we, are we are frightened of them? People, the, the most common way people give up their power is thinking they don't have any. Well, hey, we'll see about that in the next little while. Look at it. If you go on YouTube and, and, and put in um, the tiny dot, or words to that effect, it's hilarious. What they do is they show the American population, this is just a bit of it, by the way, in relation to the number of people in government and Congress, and here, this, this little bigger one, uh, the, the number of people in the internal revenue, their version of uh, the, the taxation people. I mean, look at them! If you, if you look at the people that are actually at the core in full knowing of this whole thing, it's tiny. They have to recruit from the target population. Don't panic, organise! The reason, the reason they get away with it is they divide them bloody rulers. You know, the people don't know their true power. Walk away! This is it. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I've told this story before, but I just bloody love it. I, I, went to, um, I went to, you know Larry Grayson, the comedian? Shut that door and all that stuff. Well, I went to his funeral. Um, or, not his funeral, his memorial at, in Covent Garden. And Roy Hudd, another uh, British comedian, he, he did this tribute to um, 
to, uh, to him and he, uh, he told this story that Larry Grayson told him where he, he, you know, he, he was going around the, this, in this all-male show, Larry Grayson, because as you know he used to dress up as, as women in, in all-male shows and stuff in, in, in earlier times. And he said he was in this all-male show and he, the, the, the finale of the show was that all the men came on dressed as sailors and they formed this, this pyramid on the stage and um, Larry Grayson came on as Rule Britannia was playing, you know, Britannia rules the waves. What do you want to rule a wave for, you pillow? What are you talking about? It's ludicrous. The whole the world's mad. Anyway, he comes on dressed as Britannia with his shield and the helmet and the sword, gets manhandled up the top of the pyramid for the big finish. And, he, you know, Larry said in the story that uh, Roy had repeated that um, he... Um, one night he said things seemed to be going rather well and then he noticed that so, uh, one of the sailors in the bottom left hand corner of the pyramid had got rather a cough and he said well I was surprised we had slept in some uh, damp beds that week he said anyway he got a cough and this cough got worse and worse and worse and here's this, this sailor I, I got no power I have just uh, do reason why and, and, and he couldn't hold the pyramid anymore and he stepped forward this, this no power little man and bang the pyramid fell and Larry Grayson, symbolic of this elite, ended up in the second row in someone's lap. Um, and I, I, I listened to that and I thought, funny, but that's what this is, it's a house of cards and it's only there because we're holding it together. You know, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of sheep following a shepherd and a sheepdog. Hundreds of them. And the, the shepherd is authority. And the sheepdog is fear that authority delivers if you don't conform. Row, row, row. And you look at it, and all these hundreds of sheep are just following the one in front and succumbing to fear. Now, it wouldn't take anything like all of them. It would take nothing like half of them. It would take just a significant number of these sheep to go, do you know something, mate? I'm fed up with fire. Every day, every day we come out of that field and we walk through this bloody street and we go into these... I've never been down that street. I wonder what, I've always wondered what's that. Have you? I'm going down. I'm having enough. I'm going down. Do you know something? I've never been down here. I'm going down here. In no time, just by a few of them saying, I ain't conforming anymore. I ain't giving me power away anymore. I'm not letting you tell me what I am and what I do anymore. This authority figure, yeah, he's looking around <laughs> What do we do? What do we do? Because they've got no power. Because the sheep are going off in all different directions and are not conforming. And when the sheepdog comes round, row, 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 oh, God, you have a bonus. I mean, I'm not frightened, I'm not frightened of you, okay? Go away. You have no power over me. And thus, this mass of sheep conformity, herd like conformity, controlled by a shepherd and a sheepdog, suddenly they cannot control them. The system cannot control them because this only works if this follows that without question. And that's what the human race has been doing for generation and generation. The sheep breeding season is over. Human race. So, so where now? Well, we can keep going as we are. Are these silly sods in their silly bloody uniforms and funny hats? They, they, they await us uh, uh, that line. Or we can awaken and change reality to the point where we don't any longer, uh, are no longer heading for this fascist global state, which is just something that is happening because we're not uh, challenging it. Uh, we can, first of all, um, turn off the microwave for the mind called the television and only put it on when it serves us and not goggle box it so we're serving it. When we're watching television, we go into brainwave states that are pretty much the same as a hypnotic state uh, and we can stop making excuses. Oh, I'd like to do something, but there's an R in the month. Uh, and, 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 well, I didn't know it was happening. That is not an excuse anymore. No, it, it was an excuse. Oh, so I, I would have done something, but I didn't know. Not anymore. The information is there. Anyone that doesn't look at it is choosing not to look at it. So that's not an excuse anymore. We stop conforming to the blueprint which is being provided for us on a waveform level to decode through into our own imprisonment. You know this, this archontic force is, has no creative imagination. It can only distort what already exists. Thus, they cannot create the world of Orwell. They have to manipulate us to create it. 
And what they're doing all the time, and a lot of this stuff in the movies, which are feeding you what they want to happen, look at all the movies over the last like decade or so, more and more now all the time, that are portraying this very police state and this very Orwellian fascist uh, uh, Gender 21 world that I've been talking about. They're doing that for a reason. It's to implant that in the subconscious so it becomes reality through humans' uh, creative imagination. They have to get us to do it. Number one, the fascist global state is not coming because we're not fricking having it anymore. And we are not any longer going to be manipulated into manifesting our own enslavement. And when they tell us to be quiet, we shout bloody louder. Silence is consent. Can you hear us now? If you want to be free, then don't run and hide. This is a time for looking the world in the bloody eye. Together. Coming together. Strength does not come from physical capacity, it comes from indomitable will, Mahatma Gandhi. And that will, that will says we are not having it anymore. Human race, get off your knees. What are you doing down there? Hey! All these reasons we get on our knees. Oh, God, and all oh, bloody hell. You're, you, all that exists, all imagination, all possibility, all that is, has been, and ever can be, what are you on your freaking knees to? Yourself. Ridiculous. Come on. Get off your knees. Look at the dynamics. Look at the numbers. It can only happen because we allow ourselves to be divided and ruled. Divided and ruled through our Kantic religions under different names. Divided and ruled by the ludicrous fault lines of race and culture. Celebrate your race, celebrate your culture. But it's an experience, we're all one. Divided and ruled by the ludicrous Liberal, Democrat, Labour, Conservative, Republican, bollocks. Masks on the same face. Rich and poor and all these bloody things. And there's another divide and rule that people forget about. Me, me, me. What divides me, me, me from everything else is I'll only do what I think is right for me, me, me in the circumstances that I face. Why don't we start uh, uh, responding and reacting to situations on the basis of what is right and what is just and what is fair in that situation for all concerned rather than what is right for me, me, me. I say this, what are you doing, you people in science? who are developing every day more efficient ways of killing your fellow humanity and poisoning them even ever more efficiently. What are you doing? You have children. You have grandchildren. You are destroying their world. Look in the eyes of your children, grandchildren, and tell them you can justify that. Why are you doing it? Because of me, 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 my job, my money, my career. What about your humanity? What about your sense of decency? This is a guy called Donovan Hunter. He's going round these bloody things, selling to the authorities the battle prod. Which is like millions of volts due to be used that will make the taser with 55,000 volts look like a tea party. And he's got children and grandchildren. And he's trying to flog this into the world that they're going to have to inherit. All you people that work for Monsanto and are not core insiders, you people that work for these agencies that are destroying small farmers and small uh, uh, businesses and growers, all you that are working for the system in dark suit administrations, what are you doing? Me, 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 
That is what you're doing. And you're destroying everything decent by the obsession with self and your own uh, desires and your own greed and your own self-indulgence. You people in the media, what are you doing? You go around reporting the world the way the system wants it reporting, telling the people the version of events that suits the system, the very system that wants to destroy the world and enslave your children and your grandchildren. What are you doing? How about this lady, Amber Lyon? worked for CNN, was told to lie about reporting in uh, Bahrain where that vicious, vicious regime is uh, treating and torturing the people of Bahrain in that grotesque, tyrannical way that they are, unchallenged by the West because it suits the West for them to do it. When she was told to lie, she was out of there and she's exposing CNN for the fraud that it is. That's a journalist. And, uh, hey, you know, every, every now and again I get approached by celebrities. Uh, oh, you're doing a great job, mate. I think it's wonderful what you're doing. OK, and what are you going to do? You're going to make a freaking film now, aren't you? You're going to make another bloody record. You're going to stand in front of tens of thousands of people. You're going to go on chat shows watched by millions of people. And are you going to bring this subject up yourself? No! Why? Me! 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 How would it affect my career? I tell, I tell you, anyone in the public eye, come nowhere near me unless you are prepared to put your bloody self where your mouth is. Walk the talk or walk the other way. And then all these people, there's some great stuff goes on on the internet and there's some great information passed around forums, but my God, there's some bollocks. I tell you what, oh my God. Uh, you know, I, I have sympathy for those that don't know what's happening because they've never come across the information, they just don't work in those circles. I can see that. I'm doing nothing because I don't know. It's more and more difficult to justify that, as I've said, but some people do. Okay, fair enough. But when people, not least through the efforts of others, have access to information about what's happening in the world and the direction it's going and what's at the end of this bloody rainbow, unless we sort it out, and their only contribution is abusing each other on the fricking internet and trying to abuse and undermine those who've got the guts to stand up and actually do something, that is beyond the cesspit for me and far worse than people that don't know doing nothing. Instead of arguing with each other, in, in, you know, four and bloody arguments between people you don't bloody know anyway, it's a bloody login name, and bloody trying to abuse people who are trying to do something, look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself a question. What are you doing? And get off your ass and use your bloody time to make a difference, rather than just become another expression of the frickin' problem. Oh, I've won the argument, he's not responded, bloody hell. Walk the talk or shut the fuck up. And then, dark suits in government administration and people in uniform. What are you doing? What is it about uniform? Are people like putting fancy dress on? I mean, you know, I mean, look at this guy, this Swiss guard of the Vatican. And they've got guns, these people. I mean, being shot is bad enough, but being shot by someone in pyjamas must be a nightmare. <laughs> Bloody hell. Oh, the world's mad. That's where I came in, isn't it? Bloody hell. Anyway, all these people, you know, these, these have families and grandchildren and children and all that stuff, and they're hijacking their future. As, as they, you know, the Occupy protesters say to the police, you're the 99% too. Because 
There are so few in full knowledge who are manipulating humanity that they have to recruit from the target population to enforce their agenda upon the target population. And all these people, these first responders, 9-11, who are now dying of the diseases of breathing in what they knew was in that debris, who are uh, denied the finances, even for the drugs and stuff, to treat the, what they have. All these people losing limbs and losing lives in wars of conquest and wars of tyranny. I mean, defending and increasing the, the, the opium crop. This is, this is the opium production in Afghanistan under CIA control. This is since the takeover or the invasion. That was the little bit with the Taliban. I've got a brief of the Taliban. I mean, don't start me off. But uh, on this, look at it. W w the troops are defending the, the opium crop. And they're losing their limbs and they're killing kids and things for it. You know, Bertrand Russell said, many a man will have the courage. It's a funny thing, this, physical courage and moral courage. So often people find physical courage easier. Many a man will have the courage to die gallantly, but will not have the courage to say or even think that the cause for which he is asked to die is an unworthy one. It's about time they did. Don't tell me, people in uniform, that when you're killing kids, that... You're just following bloody orders. No, no. That's uh, Woody Guthrie said. I would like to see every single soldier on every single side just take off your helmet, unbuckle your kit, lay down your rifle and set down on the side of some shady lane and say, nope, I ain't going to kill nobody. Plenty of rich folks want to fight. Give them the guns. Come on, people in uniform, put down your weapons. You're fighting for a system that is designed to destroy your freedom and your family's freedom. Put your guns down, for goodness sake. We don't want war. You probably don't, most of you want to fight wars, even though you're in bloody uniform. But we fight them anyway. This is what Henry Kissinger said about American troops. They're dumb, stupid animals to be used as pawns for foreign policy. That's what they think of you. Oh, support the troops. There, yeah, support the troops while they're serving the system. And when they challenge the system, put them in a psychiatric freaking home because uh, they must be mad because they're questioning 9-11. They don't give a shit about you. They don't. You're just a pawn in a game, and when you're maimed and can't fight anymore, they'll get some more bloody pawns. I mean, they're putting troops into situations where they get radiation and diseases like Gulf War Syndrome. These people that are so often, not all of them, but many of them, so officious and unpleasant of the TSA and the airport security and stuff, many of them are going down like nine pins at some airports from the cumulative effect of radiation from the very bloody machines that they're putting people through. Now, they don't give a shit about you because they know some other mug will come along and stand there eventually, especially in a recession when people are desperate for money. Vacancies available. There you go, join the army. I'm digging my own grave now. That's a great idea, isn't it? What is it uh, Senator George McGovern said? I think he died recently. What a great quote. He talked about old men dreaming up wars for young men to die in. Well, come on, young men and young women. Stop bloody dying in them then and stop killing others in them. Make a choice. It's your power. And what, what do they bloody do to the people that survived the wars, eh? In old age, oh, support the troops. And they cut back their bloody benefits and cut them back. They don't give a shit about you. You can't bloody fight anymore. No use to us. Albert Einstein, the pioneers of a warless world are the youth that refuse military service. And, and the older people that support them in that aim. I am so proud my son is serving his country. Oh really? You're proud that he's serving his bloody uh, country in the way of putting himself in danger and killing bloody others? Oh God, that's something to be proud of, Dad. The draft is coming. I want you uh, for the US Army and all this stuff. 
Bollocks, we ain't doing it. Okay, we're having a draft. Everyone in the army, bugger off. We're not doing it. Where's their power? Their power is in our acquiescence to their demands. Enough! These are wonderful people. These Israelis are wonderful people who are going to prison because they will not serve the Israeli tyranny against Palestinians. Wonderful people. These Iraq veterans who've sussed it, who've seen what they were used for. Look at it. What are you doing? It's unbelievable. Know thyself. You're not a man in uniform, you are infinite awareness. And consciousness doesn't fight, because consciousness knows that that which is fighting is an expression of itself. Mind fights mind. Five sense bubble fights five sense bubble. Consciousness doesn't fight, because it's too aware to do so. As someone brilliantly said, the real fight in terms of people in uniform and soldiers and military, the real fight is not with others, the real fight is with your own unconsciousness, with your own unawareness. Wake up and see it! And it's the same with people that think we should meet this challenge with, with riots and violence and all this stuff. What you fight, you become. I was talking to, uh, I was talking to a policeman that used to, uh, used to uh, police the uh, opposing marches back in the 70s between the fascist kind of National Front and uh, the, um, the anti-fascist marchers. And he used to say, nice bloke, he said to me, I couldn't tell the difference in their behaviour. What you fight, you become. It's amazing, these, these people who, who, who I call robot radicals, who they say freedom of speech, and then when you say something they don't like, they call for you to be stopped from bloody saying it. I love it. This is a meeting of mind. This is not a fight between consciousness, because consciousness doesn't fight. It's a meeting of mind, one in uniform and one anti-uniform. Polarities. Martin Luther King again, the limitation of riots, moral questions aside, is that they cannot win and their participants know it. Hence, rioting is not revolutionary but reactionary because it invites defeat. It involves an emotional catharsis but it must be followed by a sense of futility. Oh, we've had a riot, let's go up the pub. What has it changed? Nothing. Yes, we need a revolution but a revolution of human perception, a revolution of human awareness from which everything else comes. As the Beatles said, but when you talk about destruction, don't you know you can count me out? What's the point? You're just playing the same game and calling it a different name. We don't need to hate this control system because if we hate the control system, we become the control system. We're bigger than that. We don't bloody take what it's trying to do and love in its true sense, my goodness me. You try m messing with that in terms of telling it what to think and do. But you don't have to hate, you just become what you hate. It eats you away, it's a cancer. And all, this, all these bloody protests even, I mean, great, great, uh, do it. But, I, you know, I call many of them steam whistles. You know, we have a million people marches to Washington sometimes. What does it change? Usually nothing. We have great st student uh, demonstrations over tuition fees. What, ha what has changed? The tuition fees go up, nothing changes. On and on. 500,000 to a million people on the streets uh, are protesting against the imminent invasion of Iraq. What did they do? They invaded Iraq. They're not frightened of protest. In places like the Middle East, they're manipulating lots of them. Uh, this is not changing anything in Greece. What we need to do um, is realise what freedom is and realise who we are and then we might have a chance of bringing this to an end because I look in Egypt and I saw all those people and it was very, very, very moving to see those people celebrating the end of Mubarak and equating it with freedom. But the same bloody people, oh not all of them, but a lot of them, while they were protesting in that square and demanding freedom, were doing that five times a day. So don't talk to me about freedom because that ain't bloody freedom. What they're terrified of is not protest, but in 
us coming together, no matter what race, no matter what religion or no religion, no matter what income bracket, and healing the fault lines, the manufactured fault lines of divide and rule. That's what they're terrified of because they have to divide and rule us because together it's a fly on an elephant's back that we're dealing with here. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Part of that coming together is that someone else's injustice is our injustice. If we only uh, think injustice is worth challenging when it's something that affects us, A, we are allowing that cancer of injustice to grow and grow and grow and eventually it will knock on our door. As Pastor Neomola said, first they came for the Jews and I was not a Jew so I did nothing. Then they came for the communists, I was not a communist so I did nothing. Then they came uh, for the trade unionists, I was not a trade unionist, I did nothing. Then they came for me and there was no one left to speak out for me. Okay, now they're coming for the Muslims. Now they're coming for the Syrians. Now they're coming for the Libyans. Now they're coming for uh, uh, former soldiers in America who they're targeting, what they call veterans and all the rest of it. Then they're coming for so-and-so. Then they're coming for so-and-so. Not my problem, not my problem, not my problem, not my problem. Knock, 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 late at night. Oh dear, I wonder who that could be. We need to stop complying and start defying by non-complying. There will be no change. We have to comply with our own enslavement because the numbers mean we cannot be enslaved otherwise. Comply with our own enslavement? No, no, no. Supporting the non-compliance of others, of their enslavement, yes, yes, yes. We need to come together. As George Orwell said, until they become conscious, they will never rebel, and until after they have rebelled, they cannot become conscious. Well, how about not rebelling? How about just not cooperating? Not cooperating. Okay. Some guy, some, some guy in a suit, whoever it is, comes out of the White House, comes out of Downing Street. We've had a meeting, we've had a discussion. This is what we're going to do. This is what's going to happen. That only happens because the population comply with that one guy and a few others saying what's going to happen. Oh, you can't break the law. Oh, really? Well, what if a law was passed that the state took your children away tomorrow and you never see them again? Would you comply with that? Oh, no. Well, there is a bloody line then. It's just that my line's fricking over here. And if, when they said, this is what we're going to do, vast numbers of people said, we ain't doing it. No power. Our enslavement is our compliance with our enslavement. We need what I call the non-comply dance, the non-comply dance, compliance, where people dance to a different drum, dance to a different beat. No, no more do we comply out of fear of not complying with these dark suits and people. We stop complying, but we stop complying with a smile on our face and a heart that's open, not in anger, not in bitterness, but in steely, we are not having it. So we hold our vibration and don't get pulled into theirs. Awaken. Remember who you are. The mystic Osho said about the awakened man, awakened man, woman, whatever, we're just all consciousness anyway. He said, people are afraid, very much afraid, of those who know themselves. They have a certain power, a certain aura, and a certain magnetism, a charisma that can take out alive young people from the traditional imprisonment. The awakened man, woman, cannot be enslaved. That is the difficulty. And he, she, cannot be imprisoned. The awakened man, woman, is the greatest stranger in the world. He, she does not seem to belong to anybody. No organization confines them. No community, no society, no nation. Why? Because they know that we are all one. All one consciousness. Freedom is being yourself without permission. 
People think, oh, we're all one. Oh, we're all the same then. I'm oneness and I'm oneness and I'm oneness. That's not it. When you disconnect from oneness into the uh, limitation of mind and senses, that's when you become, I'm not oneness, I'm not oneness, I'm not oneness. Oneness is what? It is the celebration that we're all expressions of all possibility. Subra celebrating spontaneity. Ex celebrating creativity. Celebrating uniqueness is to celebrate the oneness of everything, which is m just all possibility under another name. It takes nothing to join the crowd. It takes everything to stand alone. And we're not more and more standing alone because there is a great awakening going on. Einstein said you cannot solve problems with the same level of consciousness that created them. That's why the only way this world is going to change, this reality is going to change, is when there is a consciousness shift, an expansion of consciousness beyond time and space, beyond the bounds of time and space, and there is the gateway to that, that this system wants to shut. Open our minds and clear our minds of the clutter the irrelevant clutter that the system wants us to take seriously. You know, yeah, well, you know what she said about me? Oh, I'm disgusted. Oh, see what said about me on the internet? I don't give a shit. Uh, and, and so, I have this thing, the deathbed perception. You're on your deathbed, and um, you've got ten minutes to live, and you say to them, what matters to you now? You know, you know over here, you know when that guy cut you up at the lights and you, you got out of your car and you smacked him one, you, all that stuff. Does that matter now that you got home ten minutes late because he cut you up? I mean, didn't, no. What about that relationship? It wasn't very good, was it? Over here, 19, 1965 or whatever it was, the, you know, a bit of a bad time. But you didn't like it at the time and she didn't like you much, but I mean, does it matter now? No. And so on and so on. So what matters now to you with ten minutes to live? What matters now is... How I, how I loved and how I was loved. That's all that matters to me. Everything else is irrelevant. And so... And so... And so I have some good news. You haven't got ten minutes to live. Now bring that here and take that with you for the rest of your life and your life will be transformed. And enough people of us do it, the world will be transformed breaking the spell, breaking the hypnotic trance, breaking the trance that these people put us in, and ignoring all this crap from parents and bloody teachers and media and politicians and all the rest of them. Oh, yeah, 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 you're just, uh, you must believe this, you're this or that's bad. This. Shut the fuck up! Okay? I am infinite consciousness. I will decide my reality. I am available for children's parties, by the way. <laughs> and, and so we are connecting to this matrix by vibrationally being pulled into it, not least through emotion, overriding the lizard brain, which is about Re reaction, emotional reaction. And it's funny how, you know, our, again, because it's here and not here, we're reacting all the time. And I say we, you know, I'm not sitting cross-legged on a bloody mountain above it all. Um, um, and we react from here. And in doing so, we are reacting. We're not thinking it through, we're not responding, we're not coming from here, we're re reacting. And what, what is it? It's problem, reaction, solution. It's not problem, think it through, do a bit of research, have a look at it, solution. It's reaction. It's all manipulating this. And if we stop reacting, the whole thing, count to 10, count to 20 if necessary, and then um, that in, initial reaction, which is coming from the reaction of the, of the lizard brain, because the reptilian brain does not think. It just reacts. That's why it's in there first before the, the, the thinking uh, part of us has got a, a, a word in. This is what road rage is about. You, you know, you road rage, people do, and then they, 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 they lock in and they go, oh my God, what was I doing? What you were doing was being overridden by the reptilian uh, brain of uh, emotional response. And so if we just go, not react, not respond, just Stay calm, and in a few seconds, the whole thing changes, and you can think it through, and the situation transforms. Blinded by belief. What is 
What is a hypnotist doing when he's putting um, preconceived ideas into the brain so that they read reality in that way, like the person next to them's, you know, playing an instrument or something on the stage? It's putting in a belief, a sense of perception. And so the system wants you to believe something rigidly because then they got you. Believe, a religious belief, political belief, any of these beliefs. And I, I tell you, I don't believe anything. And people say, you've got to believe something. I don't. I don't. No. Because what I have at any point in time, I left believing a long, a long time ago, um, I have a perception of how things are at that point. A perception of how things are. Now, I know that because I'm infinite awareness, but I'm not accessing the entirety of infinite awareness, no matter what I perceive at this moment, there is always vastly more to know. So I've got my trainers on, I'm light on my feet, I'm looking to move this perception on because I know that whatever I know, is no, there is vastly more to know. You don't get caught in this defending belief system, defending rigidity of belief from all borders. You get a belief and then you defend people from it. This is what the skeptic society is doing. They're terrified of their beliefs not being true, so they attack anybody with another view. And, and therefore, um, when you're light on your feet and you don't have a belief, then you're, you're constantly looking for ways to expand your awareness and expand your understanding. As Socrates is supposed to have said in ancient Greece, wisdom is knowing how little we know. We're always open then. Not only we believe everything, but we're open to it. We give it a chance. Religion is mind. The belief of religion is mind. You know, I mean, and it's one religion, you know. Oh, yes, it's the archontic religion under different names. Okay, what are you? I'm a Christian. All right, well, that's nice. So what does that mean? That means that uh, um, I, I go to a church and this man in a frock tells me what God wants me to do and he tells me what, what God says is what is. Okay, well, that's fair enough. And what are you? Well, I'm Jewish. Okay, and what does that mean? Well, I go to this synagogue, yeah, and this man in a frock tells me what God wants and what God... Uh, thinks I should do for me to go to heaven and, and tells me what is reality and world between these covers the two books like, like their book. Yeah, yes, it's similar, isn't it? Two different, uh, yeah, different, you know, um, testaments. Right, okay. So, who are you? I'm a Muslim. Oh, really? I'm a Muslim. What's that mean? It means I go to the mosque and these many frocks tell me what to believe and, and, and what God wants and what I should do to please God. Well, that's what he told me and he told me. It's one, it's one blueprint. They just call it a different name. It's like having a computer game and calling it different names. We call them religions. They're prisons of the mind. This is a hypnotist stage show. This is a hypnotist stage show um, where um, they are, uh, they've been uh, hypnotized to believe they're evangelical Christians. They're not, but they believe they are. And we need to worship we need to worship sports stars, worship politicians, worship uh, entertainers, worship deities. We need to look up because we're down here. Part of the genetic manipulation that went on with humanity is they removed the vertebrae in the neck, so we're always looking up. Evan's up there, everyone's up there, and I'm down here. And all the rest. What was it? A Val Dunican. You know, remember Val Dunican? Walk tall, walk straight, and look the world right in the eye. That's what my mama told me when I was about knee high. She said, son, be a proud man and hold your head up high. Walk tall, walk straight and look the world right in the eye. And <laughs> well, then we have, um, we have uh, hierarchies. That's, that's the vertebrae again. I know my place. And then we have the anti-hierarchy, anti-religion thing in the New Age, and they have the hierarchy of the great white bloody brotherhood. I mean, it's hierarchies everywhere, prisons of the mind everywhere. Not just religion, but politics, race. You know, enjoy your different races. It's not who you are, though. It's an experience. And no race is better than another bloody race. It's bollocks. It's just a bloody vehicle. And, of course, the prisons of the mind of self-identity, not least little me. And when we have belief systems, that's how we see the world. Thus, we don't see the world. We see a dot in the world. And belief systems, you know, come in all shapes and sizes. That is as freaking ludicrous as that. You know, oh no, it's native peoples. Well, to me, I don't care if it's native peoples or a guy on Wall Street. It's bloody nonsense. What have you got a plate in your mouth for? It's ridiculous.
Well, it, it's tradition. Well, bloody hell, sacrificing children was a tradition. Oh, you know, I mean, the belief systems come in all shapes and sizes. Gotcha. They don't care which one it is. And they found that when you have a rigid belief, the neurons in the brain fire off in a repeating pattern, constantly um, uh, underpinning the belief and repelling all borders. And then the matrix has you. Albert Einstein, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. Therefore, it's time to do something else. Like getting that blank sheet of paper, getting everything off it and making it earn its place on it. Don't tell me, Dogma Dawkins, what to put there, or Mr. Doctor or Mr. Academic, or Mr. Scientist, or Mr. Media Man, don't you dare tell me what I put on my sheet of paper. This, and this tells me, not you. And then we can start to break the mold of being what other people tell us we should be, thus being like everyone else. In The Matrix, there was that scene where there was this acceptance that you are a slave. You have to accept your situation, because if you don't, you never do anything about it. So we face the situation, and then we bloody do something about it. You are a slave, Neo. I choose freedom. And then you have the transformation, which obviously can be challenging sometimes. It was for me. I had mine in the public eye. But the, the benefits of awakening to the greater self are just fantastic. Know thyself. Don't look in the mirror and say, that's me. That's an expression of your experience. Stop looking in a microscope and seeing me. Because you are all that is, has been and ever can be having an experience. You're not your mirror. You're not your body. And the redefining self is, is greatly part of the awakening. Instead of saying, I am uh, this person uh, and that's me, it is, I am infinite awareness having an experience of that person redefining self. No more little me. No more I can't. No more I could never. No more the best things happen to other people. We create our reality by our sense of reality. Change that, we change how it manifests. <laughs> Taking responsibility. You know, people don't want to take responsibility, they want to hand it out. It's all your fault. And it's all right, we need to know about this manipulation, we need to know about this conspiracy, so we can understand where we are and do something about it. But let's not forget this. Seven billion people can only be enslaved by a tiny few because they have accepted and acquiesced to that control. So we are responsible, that's great news, because if we are responsible, we can take that responsibility and bring an end to it. There's no such thing as good luck or bad luck. Um, it's just what you create. When people say, why me? Why is this happening to me? It's a good question. Because this electromagnetic field is going out all the time and it's impregnated with our state of being, our beliefs, our sense of perception and all these things. And it's locking in to other magnetic fields um, that sync with what we're putting out and we pull in expressions of this. And often, you know, we pull in over a period of time the same kind of people Oh, not someone else like that. Well, what's the common theme? It's not all those people, it's you, mate. Why is it happening? And if we take responsibility and say, what is it about me that's pulling in these things and that uh, perception of what it is will change it immediately, that, um, that uh, acknowledgement of what it is, suddenly those people don't come into your life anymore. Those pains in the arse and people are giving you a bad time. Other people come in because suddenly what you're putting out changes what you're sinking with and drawing in. People, places, ways of life, opportunities or lack of them uh, uh, change also. Because... Because this reality, this holographic reality of the conscious mind is like a movie screen. When it hits here, it's a done deal. We need to go where it's coming from. If you want to change the movie, it's no good standing on the screen complaining and telling the bloody movie to change. It ain't got to change. You've got to find where it's being projected from and change that. And this is the movie, but this is where it's being projected from. And if we change that, we change the movie. And, and the conspirators know that. That's why they manipulate us to have certain realities, because they know we'll manifest them. How do we know what is projecting from within to the conscious mind the language of life? What is the language of life? This holographic world 
Our lives, everything in it, is an expression of waveform information and states of being. Therefore, what's happening here is an expression of what's happening here. If you want to know what's happening here and what needs to change and be addressed, then just look at what's happening here. What are the constantly recurring themes in your life that you don't like? Well, that is telling you that there's something going here that's manifesting them. Change that, they go away. We are in control when we know how the system works. And a lot of these challenges we get, and we feel bad about ourselves and stuff like that, they're actually in the, they're actually in the blueprint because they're trying to teach us something. Someone said, uh, out of suffering have emerged the strongest of souls. Most massive characters are seared with scars. There's nothing like experience of this world to understand this world, I tell you. Why me? Well, that's ask, you, ask yourself. It's your choice. As the, the uh, oracle said in the Matrix, when Neo said about choice, she said, you've already made the choice. Now you have to understand it. You didn't come here to make the choice. You've already made it. You're here to try to understand why you made it. But the choice to be in this reality, at this, in this cycle, was made by consciousness beyond time and space. That which is within time and space is trying to understand it. That's why it finds it so difficult. Why us? Why are we uh, in human form and in this part of the cycle with it all going on? Same thing. You've already made the choice. You've got to understand why you made the choice. But that made the choice. This is trying to understand the choice. And the more this opens to that, the more you understand why you made the choice. And I would suggest that vast numbers of us made the choice because we're here to break the spell. We're here to break the spell. We're here to ensure that this does not happen. And to do that, we need to get these mind parasites out of the way. Get them out of our awareness. How do we do that? Well, let's look at what the mind parasites want us to do and the states of mind and emotion they want us to go in and we go into the other uh, states of being rather than those they want us to go into. By doing that we are disconnecting from the mind parasites because we are expressing what they don't want to express thus we are not in the frequency range that they want to pull us into. And we come back to this, the Native American story of the wolves. What they want is to pull us into states of anger, envy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, all this stuff. And they don't want us to come into peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness and all this stuff, empathy. Thus, if we make sure and take control to come into those states, then we are disconnecting from the mind parasites and they lose their power over our perceptions and our responses. And in short, we do what we know to be right in the moment and fair in the moment and not always do things on the basis of what we think is right for us. Martin Luther King, cowardice asked the question, is it safe? Expediency asked the question, is it politic? Vanity asked the question, is it popular? But conscience asked the question, is it right? And there comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe nor politic nor popular, but one must take it because it is right. And that is where we are. And as I, have I been talking about, as I've been talking about you know, the best part of 20 odd years now, uh, my first book on these subjects was called Truth Vibrations and it was after the fact that um, I, I understood at that time that there was a vibrational change coming, in other words an informational change coming that was going to wake people up from the slumber individually and collectively. There was no sign of it at the time, my goodness me, look at it now. There's a shift and it's waking people up, truth vibrations. Uh, this whole stuff about 2012 and the mind thing, I never bought that because what I've been saying for years is the greatest thing about 2012 is it's not 2011 but it's not 2013 either. This truth vibration, uh, information, vibrational change is getting more and more powerful and thus every year will be having a greater effect on more and more people as they wake up to remember who they are beyond time and space. The energetic... Uh, uh, environment is changing and we have the choice 
Uh, one of the things, by the way, that I was told about these truth vibrations is they were going to bring to the surface all that was hidden so we could see what we couldn't see before. My goodness me, what do we know now? We didn't know 20 odd years ago. What we didn't know five years ago, two years ago. Behind the wizard curtain, it's happening, it's happening. And they knew this timeline was coming and that's why, and this change was coming, that's why it's now, no coincidence, that the great police state is being thrown at us. It's to hold on to the power they have. They have to up the ante because the awakened people are a much bigger challenge than the asleep people they could manipulate away, you know, with a cup of tea earlier. Uh, but despite what is happening, despite the police state and all the rest of it, often because of it, because people see that the world ain't what they thought it was, people are waking up and remembering who they are. Looking over the wall, I love that line, the beginning is near. The beginning is here. And... Uh, So we're in a point now where there's different, vastly different energetic information fields available to lock into. You can lock into them at this level and more and more people are as more and more people waking up, this fork in the road is happening, you get more and more caught in the system. Or you can open yourself and open your heart and open your mind to the music of forever, to the music of the universe and beyond the universe. And then those who danced were thought to be quite insane by those who could not hear the music. The point is, more and more people are hearing uh, the music. And we don't want a spiritual revolution like in the 1960s. Some very good things happened, but a lot of self-indulgence and a lot of other stuff. No, what we need is a streetwise spirituality now. One that understands all this stuff, organic foods good for you and supplements, and it understands about energy and vibration, but it also has its feet on the ground and is aware of what it's dealing with and thus is streetwise to deal with it. Um, that's what we need. We don't need, it's negative, uh, we need, okay. I am infinite awareness. I am now more infinitely aware because I know this. This is not negative. This is the ultimate positivity. I now know what I'm dealing with and thus how to deal with it. So negative, you must be joking. And we can make this choice between going with the heart or going with the head or preferably bringing them together in harmony and getting the best from both. The first step to getting anywhere is deciding you're no longer willing to stay where you are. Then you must change because you're making another step. And what do you find when you do that? You find, I can fly. But you have to step off before you can realize that you can fly. And it's the fear that you can't that stops you from doing so. Moving from this to this. That's the revolution. Everything comes from that. You know, and this is... Um, uh, one of those Emoto um, crystals uh, that came from severely polluted water. That's what pollution does to water crystals. Um, and it says here that uh, it was then blessed. In other words, heart energy, high energy was impregnated into it and it became this. You know what the uh, Institute of Heart Math in America has found? Is that empathy, appreciation, love, compassion, caring is thousands and thousands and thousands of times more powerful than hate and fear and all these other things. And um, they, the Satanists, don't go to these places on the Earth's grid and do their rituals to hold down the energy field and to bring down the vibration for a bit of fun. They do it to hold humanity in servitude to those low vibrational states. We need to change this, we need to change the energy sea, and we do that with another form of the non-comply dance, because, you know, we can, go on, we can go on protests and hurl abuse and stuff like that through our anger, understandably so, you know, people in Greece getting angry, my God, in Spain getting angry, buddy, understand it, but what does it do, what does it achieve? It just feeds the dragon, feeds the, the, uh, the demon. So. Why don't we think of another way? How about... Hello, sir. It's, uh, it's Officer Dumbskull, sir. I'm at the protest. Yes, Dumbskull, what's the problem? Yes, there is a problem, sir. We've had a big problem today. What's the problem? Were they violent? Uh, no, sir. Uh, did they occupy the building? No, sir. But what was the problem? What did they do? 
They're dancing, sir. They're dancing. We didn't know what to do. When they shout at us and earl abuse, we know what to do. We just hit them with a truncheon. But when they dance, we didn't know what to do. So what did you do, Dunskull? Well, the music had such a good beat, sir, we joined in. Right? Now, what about, what if about if we went to protest and we just stood there in very large numbers, large numbers, large numbers, large numbers. They pick few people off, they can't pick large numbers off. And we just send out our energy. We're still protesting, we're still immovable, but we're not aggressive, we're not getting pulled into their, uh, into their vibration. And then, and then when we create a lovely energy field, we just freaking dance. The non-comply dance. And let's go, let's, let's have vast numbers of people going to sacred sites and getting together and just dancing with joy and happiness and celebrating life, celebrating the fact that we're all existence. That's as bad as it gets. So, let's get the guys on, who've you know, done a great job volunteering to do this today, and let's have a non-comply dance. Okay. Just joy. Joy. Okay. I love Irish music. Okay. If you could join us with a clap and a shout and anything you bloody like. Okay. Simon. Oh, we're not ready yet. We are ready. Are we ready? Cue Simon. Here we go. Oh, because I'm going to join it. If you take it into the, the deeper levels, they are electromagnetic fields interacting with the electromagnetic field. 
with joy and love and, and, and expression and joy of life and thus that is the energy that is generated by doing that. Isn't that better than carrying a banner and hurling abuse? And we open our hearts. That is the revolution. And I came across this lovely, lovely clip of a little girl who is telling us where we're going. When I grow up, I'm going to build a community that, well, it's not a community. I'm, like, going to have my own hotel. I'm going to have people there. And I'm going to invite them in. They don't have to pay to do it. It's like they can come into arms when they need it. We give them whatever they need. We even make their clean beds. We give them food, yummy food that, well, they tell us what they want. And then we make it. But we don't want to pay for it. The people can offer, like, say, since you've been so sweet, like, when I need arms around me, you can come and hug me and say, are you okay, and help me. Here's a gift of money for you. But we don't say you got to pay us. We say you don't have to pay us just if you want to. Since we've been so sweet to you, you can. I don't want to be out of my head. I want to be out of here. 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 Connected down to my toes. Yes. Out of here, down on my toes, beyond the bounds of time and space. We are all one. Yes, we are all one, including those who seek in their ignorance to suppress us. We are all one, including those working for those who wish to oppress us. What we fight, what we hate, we become. We are all one. I came across this beautiful piece of music by Michael Red Buffalo Hart Dimitri, a Native American, and uh, the, the mantra, please join in because I'm going to, uh, way uh, all that stuff, you'll get it. It means, Creator, hear me, we are one. Go! Yes!
those people that think the way forward is fighting. What you fight, you become. You go in here. You move your point of attention into here. Through, out of time and space. No one wants to fight there. Where will you go here? Where is the Jew? Where is the Gentile? Where is the Muslim, the Hindu, the Buddhist? Where is the Republican, the Democrat? Where is the black, the white? They are all one. Where is the need to compete? Where is the need to crush, to war, to impose will upon? Where is it in this place? It is beyond that nonsense. It is beyond that illusion. And it is here that the revolution starts and the revolution ends. When this imposes its reality upon the illusion, the illusion becomes an illusion no more. expression of us we change the expression of us we change the world that is an expression of us we have the power we are in control of our reality but only when we become hard people again and leave the gut people behind the stone age intellect and remember 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 who we really are as opposed to that which is impregnated in our perception of self. Are love when we remember we are love and express we are love collectively the world becomes love that is our power that is the gift for self and the world that is within our power to give And so, and so, this is the revolution, and this is the choice, and this is the choice that if we make it, we change this reality. It's so fast, we, our imaginations couldn't cope at the moment that we perceive it now. And my favorite song is by a man called Sean Galloway. The words are on the screen. Come on, gang, let's go beautiful song I choose love words on the screen or maybe they're not you'll pick them up we'll see
of all this time on all this information. It's so simple. I choose love. To use, to use a theme of John Lennon, I don't believe in religion. I don't believe in new age. I don't believe in science. I don't believe in teachers. I don't believe in doctors. I don't believe in politics. I don't believe in monarchy. I don't believe in media. I don't believe in body. I don't believe in mirror. I just believe in me. Consciousness in me. Consciousness is me. That's reality. Remember who you are. Remember where you are and where you come from. Remember, remember, remember. Infinite love is the only truth. Everything, everything else is illusion. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You have been, you have been fantastic today. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Standers one, standers one, standers one.